welcome to my first installment of my very first guitar mod uh, video journal. Um, this is probably going to be a several part thing. Uh, basically what I'm doing here is I'm modding an Abinez GRG 121. And hopefully when I'm done, it will look like this. So the first thing I got to do is take this thing apart. So here we go. First thing I gotta do is take the bridge off of it. What I'm planning on doing here is replacing this with a tunematic. I've already ordered an Epiphone roller bridge and a Gibson tailpiece. One of the challenges that's going to come with this is the neck angle on the guitar because these guitars are built with the necks really flat against the body. So I will have to adjust the neck angle to accommodate the higher bridge. And I've got a couple ideas about how to do that. And I'll burn that bridge when I get there. There's one more. There it is. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and take these knobs off, try to keep all my parts together because I might actually use some of them again at some point, I build something else, maybe I'll try to turn a Les Paul into an avenue. Another thing I'm going to be doing in this build is filling in the original control cavity, which is, hold on a second, right now it's a triangular. Probably never been taken off. Goodness gracious. Bear with me. I would say, when are you going to get to the fun stuff? It's going to be a little bit. It doesn't really matter if I mess this finish up too bad because it's all going to get redone anyway. I have never seen a control cavity this tight before. Say what you will about Chinese craftsmanship, but they did a really good job fitting this cavity in here. For this plate because I can't even get a blade in there. I might have to skip forward here. 
Or this would have been an hour long video of me taking a plate cavity off. Cavity plate. Whatever. You know what I mean. Well, I'll be right back. All right, so I guess what I'm going to end up doing here is pushing out from the front. I do not have the proper socket to take these off. So I will just use my little counter lock wrench to take these off. And then once I get these off, I want to jam something through the front and knock that plate out from this side. Alright. Well, basically, like I was explaining before, what I'm going to do is fill in the original cavity. And I'm going to fill in the holes for these controls. And then I'm going to drill, well, drill, route, whatever, a completely new cavity, Les Paul style. I've already got the plate for it. You can see here, I've already got the Les Paul cavity covers. All these electronics are going to come out, so I'm not too worried about taking them out neatly. Of course, my screwdriver is too big for those screws. a smaller screwdriver. I have the Abinez multi-tool but I can't find it at the moment. It's usually right by my bedside in case I need to take a guitar part in the middle of the night for some reason. But right now it's missing in action. So I have to make do with what I have available to me at the moment. Pick up. I really like the covers on these pickups. You get that cool Ibanez check mark on a travel design. I like that. It took me a little while to realize that's what it was. I thought, oh, okay, they jumped on the travel bandwagon, but then somebody pointed out they were Ibanez check marks all stuck together, and I was like, oh wow, that's actually kind of cool. So, good job, Ibanez. It's like the kind of detail they would probably use on a higher end guitar. Kind of like the shark tooth inlays were on the old Pro Lines and the old 700 series, but then they started using them on all the uh, lower and mid grade series. And now they're everywhere and they're not so special anymore. But they're still one of my favorites. This one's going to get trapezoid inlays. 
I'm going to be doing all kinds of weird stuff that I've never done before. I mean, actually have done inlay before, but it's been years and years and years, and I didn't do it with anything like the proper tools or anything of that ilk. All right, now. that plate out hopefully there we go and it's off now since I'm not planning on keeping these electronics together I'm just going to go ahead and Nip them off. Pick up wires. Pick up wires. I'll put there's that. fun tearing things apart. Now I'll take off the, the plate on the back where the strings go through the body. Those are going to get filled also because the tunematic is not a string through design. So this will also get filled. I've got a couple ideas about how to do the back here but I'm still kind of weighing my options there as well. that get rid of this output jack I hear some people call this an input jack and I guess I can understand the confusion because you put the cord into the jack so you think it's input jack but no it's an output jack because the signal goes out from the guitar into the amp so, for the record, it is an output jack. This has been a public service announcement from Rock Block Studios. There's that. Now, I'm not going to take the tuners off the neck just yet because I'm going to be using at least two of those. At least the outside ones. When I replace this bridge... When I get it drilled out for the tunematic, I'm going to put that in just to test the neck angle. So I'll need to keep a couple of those on there so that I can adjust the neck angle appropriately. That's something I'm going to do before I even start the refinishing process because i got a lot of filling and stuff to do here. Okay, now that I've got the bridge off, first thing we need to do is fill these holes. I went and picked up a pack of skewers and I've discovered that they are the perfect size to fit through the holes that the strings go through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this sucker over and I'm going to go ahead and push the skewers through. Do this with one hand here. You'll be able to see the skewer coming through the other side. And I will just push that back in a little bit so it's fairly flat against the front. That will save me a little bit of sand in there. And I'm going to do this five more times. All right, that's kind of ugly, but it works. I will be, of course, sanding and trimming these down. Um, it took exactly one 
whole jumbo skewer to do all six of these. So I've still got about uh, 99 left. I will be selling them on eBay as string through hole fillers for $1.50 a piece. If anybody's interested, I'm just kidding. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get these trimmed down. And. Okay, one thing I'm going to do before I start gluing these things in is sand down one end of them flat. Just take a piece of sandpaper. I'm doing all this with one hand, so it's kind of. <laughs> Anyway, you get the picture. I'll be back after I get these sanded down and holes plugged. Okay, um, I've already got, I went ahead and glued, put glue down in the holes, sanded down the ends of these so they're flat-ish. Now I put a piece of tape on the back where that string through plate was so the glue didn't leak down all over my nice plush work area so then once that's dry I will fill that in and sand it all flat uh, one idea that I had was to kind of maybe put a veneer on the back of this once everything's done because I'm gonna have to hide that and I'm gonna have to hide my cavity once I get that filled in So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish putting plugs in those. The reason I'm doing that before I drill anything or measure anything for the bridge pins is because they're going to sit right about there. And they'll be overlapping. It's going to be about like that. So, I'm going to fill all those first. And I'll be back. I figured I'd show you whatever the heck's going on right here. Um, I used my smaller skewers to fill in the screw holes for the bridge and also had the, the ground wire hole coming up at an angle from here. So I just went ahead and stuck a skewer in there and tapped it on in. Now if I can ever find that exacto knife, that um, there it is. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. And then once this glue sets up a little bit, I will come back and start measuring out for my bridge posts so while that's setting up I figured I'd talk a little bit about the parts I got and I already mentioned I got a roller bridge that I'm putting on it as well as an actual Gibson tailpiece um, the reason I went for the Epiphone style roller bridge was because of these little screw slots the American Gibson thing just has a little skinny pin and the only way to adjust it is with the thumb wheel I like having the screw slots so I went for the Epiphone bridge and the roller thing seems kind of cool my anchors for tailpiece are like half an inch and my anchors for the bridge are 7 eighths. So I'm going to have to be drilling two different size holes. I'll be using my Forstner bits to do that. I will probably actually recess the bridge pins a little bit. Just to give me a little bit of height advantage. So I don't have to angle the neck quite so much. Um, I got these all from Philadelphia Luthier Tools in a... Obviously, Philadelphia, off of eBay. Uh, I think this entire bunch of equipment here, as well as my control cavity covers, came with the roller bridge and the two posts and the tailpiece and the two posts and all this. It cost me about 50 bucks, I think. Really reasonable price and seemed like good quality stuff. They say made in the USA on them, I think. Some of it does. Anyhow, that's what I'll be putting on here. This is going to be quite an interesting project. I'm going to be doing all kinds of things that I've never done before. 
Um, the interesting part's going to be filling this cavity here. Hello. Um, yeah, this will be an interesting part. But I sort of have a plan for that. Alright. So, I'm going to have to let this sit up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and sand it flat, I think, just to kind of give me a flatter surface to work with. And then I'm going to start measuring and drilling holes. Alright, this is probably the part where everybody's going to be like, what the hell are you doing? So, um, what I did was I went and bought cedar grilling planks. The taste of flavor. I figured out that four of these together would be just about the right height to fill all of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm Draw a line halfway through that. I'm going to cut this in half. I'm going to sandwich all four pieces together, glue it, and let it sit for a while. And then I'm going to make the pattern of the inside of this on it. Cut it out, drop it in there. I'm going to glue it in, of course, obviously. Um, it's not structural, so it's just basically filling a hole. And then I'm going to cover up this, the recess for the plate. Somehow, I haven't exactly figured that out yet. Then once all that's done, then I will be drilling a whole new cavity for the Les Paul style electronics. So this hole is going to disappear. Stay tuned. So it appears that I may have misoverestimated the amount of glue I was going to need to hold these two pieces of wood together. Uh, I've been wiping it down; it keeps oozing out, so I put it back down. <laughs> Uh, as I said, I'm learning as I go here, so hopefully at least you'll find it amusing. I do. Now, one thing I can always say about these projects when I do them, they're always a bit of an adventure. Um, I seem to spend a lot of time saying, what the hell am I doing and how am I going to pull this off? I always manage in the end, but it's always an interesting ride getting there. That's why I figured I'd go ahead and bring you guys along for this one, because it's definitely going to be interesting. Okay, so uh, I took a sanding block and I went ahead and sanded this down. It's fairly flat now. There's still a little bit of lumpiness to it. Of course, it's going to have to be sanded more to get these pressure marks out of them where the bridge and the ground wire were through. While I was sanding down, I came across a problem I didn't know I had. And that is the neck joint is really floppy look at that i don't know what happened to this guitar uh i paid 75 dollars for it i did notice there is a bit of a crack right there in the joint so what i'm gonna have to do is pull the neck off of this thing fill the holes and redrill them that way it'll be tight I'm not going to do that right at the moment, but it's an issue that I did not know about that I'll have to deal with. Okay, I lied. I decided I needed to go ahead and find out what was going on with this neck pocket. I took the screws and the ferrules out, and apparently somebody filled all these holes with stacks of washers. There's at least two of them in each hole. This one's broken in half. I don't know. I have never seen one from the factory this way, so I'm assuming it was done by somebody who owned it before me. See, there's one that's a different size. I have no idea why they would have done this. This is definitely not factory. Even for China. Let's see if I can find something to get that out with. In the meantime, I'm going to pop this neck. Alright, so it doesn't look like the holes are gouged out. There's a Strange shim in there, though. 
Those holes look pretty good. So I don't know exactly what happened here. Um, yeah. So anyway, there's that. It looks like the holes got drilled and then re-drilled. It's like they got reamed out or something. Somehow. I don't know. Maybe this isn't the original neck. I don't know. I don't know. Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and put this back on and see if it tightens up any better with the stacks of washers out. Alright, so I've gone ahead and measured out my pattern for my bridge. Um, basically how you do that is you go along the edge of the neck with a straight edge. And draw yourself a line there. Coming out from the edge of the neck. Then you do the same thing on the other side. Once you get it all lined up, you draw yourself another parallel line. Or not parallel, but it's basically an extension of your fretboard. And then you find the center of that. My bridge is 74 millimeters from hole center to hole center. So I had to find the center of that and then measure out 37 and a half millimeters or 37 millimeters from the center on each side. And then in order to get this three degree angle that most of these bridges have, it's going to sit at a slight angle like that. Basically, you know, went down from where that first hole is going to be, kind of drop it back a couple of millimeters and do your second one. That way it'll be at an angle instead of being like parallel. Because supposedly a lot of these things that kind of run out of intonation adjustment more on the base side than they do on the treble side. So they angle it to compensate for that. And then my tailpiece. It's got 82 millimeter centers. So it's going to sit right about there. Now, one thing that I use for reference when doing that was my 12 string has a tunematic bridge. So I kind of use that for measurements, kind of to see how to get that angle and kind of the distance between the bridge and the tailpiece. So that's kind of what I use to transfer those measurements, sort of. Uh, I didn't go exactly because that's a 23 and three quarter scale. Guy's a beautiful instrument. And this is a 25 inch scale, so I couldn't exactly go by the measurements, but I kind of used my judgment. All right, so turns out with this neck that I was having a problem with, being all floppy, it's still floppy. What's happened is the holes in the back of the body have been kind of reamed out. I don't know if somebody was just really rough with the guitar or what happened, but I'm going to have to pop the neck off and fill those holes with bamboo shoots, put skewers in that, wait for those to dry, and then redraw those holes. The ones in the neck seem fine, but the ones in the body are all just kind of reamed out. So that will have to be done. I'm going to go ahead and get my Forstner bits ready. Um, one of the things I noticed is that my posts for the tailpiece are a half inch. So I can use my Forstner bit for that. But the ones for the bridge itself are um, so I forget the size. Smaller than a half inch. <laughs> Not three eighths, it's in between three eighths and seven sixteenths. Yeah, that's it. Um, so I will have to use a smaller drill bit to do these than I will for these. 
but probably what I'll end up doing is using my Forstner bit to kind of countersink the top lip of that. That'll give me about another sixteenth of an inch of height advantage there, I guess. With that being sunk into the body. It won't be much, but anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and get all that set up. Okay, so now that I've drilled my holes and made a massive mess of my desk, um, I did a sort of a test fitting with these parts in, and I want to drop my bridge on, and uh, turns out I had not checked the fit. These holes are too small for the bridge posts. So I'm going to have to contact them and let them know that I got the wrong bridge posts with my bridge. I do still have these. I think those are fairly universal. And actually they, yeah. Anyhow, that's what I've got. I forgot how soft basswood was, so it didn't really, it just kind of went through really fast when I was drilling. So, anyhow, I am going to work on getting the holes in my neck joint plugged up. And that's about all I'm going to have time for tonight. So it turns out the holes for the next screws were just so reamed out that uh, even the jumbo skewer would not fill the hole. So what I ended up having to do was get out of my 3 8 inch Forstner bit and I went ahead and drilled all of them out. And I will be using my handy dandy 3 inch, 3 8 inch fluted dowel pins. To fill those holes, I'll be gluing those in place, cutting them off, maybe not in that order. So, that's going to be my next step. And then I'll have to re-drill new holes for the neck. Alrighty. Alright, I've got three of them in, and here goes the last of them. i got glue on it. Putting it down through the top. Pushing this side flat. So that should create a pretty good, I'm going to put some more glue in there just to kind of fill around the edges there. Some of that is actually from where that screw hole got reamed out so bad. So that's not all my damage there. This thing's pretty ratted out. The problem is I got this much sticking out the back, but this will kind of afford me the opportunity to Get this, I'll get those down flatter. I'll cut them down, and then once I go to redraw my holes, I'll use another Forstner bit to kind of chop them back down. Because those things are the shit. So, I gotta let this dry. Uh, there's not really anything else I can do with that tonight. I know I probably say that a lot. Alright, you guys remember those two cedar planks that I had. I glued them together. I cut them in half and glued them together again and put them under the best clamp that I have at my disposal at the moment, which is my bed. So I'm going to leave that under there for a while. Okay, I'm kind of laughing at myself a little bit at some of the improvisational techniques that I've come up with. In hindsight, I probably should have cut these dowels down to the length that I needed to have them before I put them through the holes, but I was tired and I wasn't thinking straight. So what I'm going to do, rather than chop those out and start over again, I have already cut the first one off. I've got this little miniature hacksaw. See how cute that is? And I'm basically using that 
to go along the lines of the guitar. I know you're probably saying, oh my god, you're going to scratch the paint. That paint's all going to go away anyway. And I'm dropping shit. Alright, I'm going to try to set this thing down. Here, let's uh, see if we can do something like that. This, I'm just going to follow the lines of the back of the car. Doesn't matter if I get that clear coat, because it's going to get sanded down and redone anyway. nothing a little filler won't fix one of the things that I've considered doing with the back of this guitar is once I get all this once I get all this stuff filled in is putting a veneer over the back of it just to, so it'll be smooth and then paint it from there in which case I don't have to worry about how perfect all of this is because there's going to be indentations and stuff especially with something this big so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these other two off all right so what's about to happen is I have put my Forstner bit uh, let's see what size is this 5 eighths and I'm basically going to use that to knock down these dowels now I'm not exactly sure if it's gonna work but let me turn this thing around there we go. I'm backwards now but you're gonna find out at the same time that I do if this is gonna work or not Get this thing lined up like it's going to work. A little bit more. Let's go real slow till we get down to where the original hole was. And not bad. See, that worked out pretty good. So then I will just drill new holes for the neck. Once I get these other three knocked down. And that's how this will work. Alright, so now I've got all four of them. And that is really freaking ugly. Um, the first one turned out really well. This one didn't go too badly. This one peeled, took a little chip off of the paint. Which is, which is fine because there's so much chipped off of this thing anyway and like I said if I put the veneer on the back of this thing I'll cover all that up that's the worst one but I'll probably sand that down I'll probably actually sculpt this heel a little bit more as I go just to kind of give it a little more of a slant I mean, it's got a little bit of a slant as it is but it's not as not as much of a slant as there is on like the RG models this one's actually pretty uh, pretty flat comparatively so I'm going to give that a little more of a contour anyway, and that'll cover up all that damage. Alrighty. Alright, I did a little bit of sanding on that, and uh, it looks better than it did. I'll, of course, putty that out. Put some putty on there. Uh, one cool thing about using the Forstner bits to do this digging out, and I'll probably clean that out some more, is that the little point in the middle leaves a spot exactly in the middle. Of the uh, hole so that'll help guide me and making my new screw holes for the neck so I'm gonna drill these out and I'll be right back 
All right, so I've got my ferrules back in and my screws. Went ahead and put the neck back on. And uh, if y'all remember how bad that thing was wiggling before, she is oh, rock solid now, which is what we want. So the plan is once I get that shim in there, this neck, which is currently sitting about like that, will end up at an angle about like so. Kind of more of a Les Paul style angle. And having this full shim, instead of just putting a strip to raise that end up, putting the full shim in there will kind of help keep wood contact with this piece of wood sandwiched in between the neck and the body, you won't lose that sustain. I actually kind of toyed with the idea of filling in the holes on everything and gluing this thing into place and making it a set neck, but I like the idea of being able to adjust it if I need to, so I'm still kind of hesitant to do anything like that. So, that's going to be next. All right, everybody, that concludes the first episode of the Ibanez Geo Gold Top Conversion. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Uh, the video hit about 45 minutes, so I figured it was a good stopping place. So uh, I hope you continue to join me on the next episode. This is going to be fun. Thank you. Bye.